Hello, middling modeler here. Welcome to Builder's Notes. I just finished the build on this guy. The 135th scale Machine and Krieger Luna Diver Stingray from Hasegawa. Eh, it was an interesting experience. Let's get into it. Quick disclaimer before we get into the build. One, this is the first time I've built a Hasegawa kit, so there's that. Two, I've never read any of the Machine and Krieger manga, so I am completely unfamiliar with the lore. I didn't even bother reading what was on the box. That is how little I know about this universe. I just saw the kit, thought it looked kind of cool, and wanted to give it a go. So what's in the box? Well, sprues, decals, and instructions for the Luna Diver Stingray, including two pilot figures and a base, as well as sprues, decals, and instructions for two prowler suits. Okay guys, so first things first. There is a display stand included with the kit. Um, it's not bad. It's not great. I kind of think it's a missed opportunity. Personally, I think there was some opportunity here for a lot more detail and a lot more just surface detail in general to make this look more interesting, especially considering you pretty much have to use it if you want to just go straight out of the box. And uh, the other reason I kind of think there should be something more to it is that this this kit comes not just with the ship but also with pilot figures and of course the uh, the two prowler suits and that kind of makes it a diorama in a box. So I really wish that they had done a better job with this uh, with the stand here. So moving on from our stand, let's have a look at the kit itself. And first and foremost, I have to say a few things about the uh, the plastic. Uh, the plastic is actually quite good. The uh, the coloring on the plastic it's kind of an off-white color, and uh, it's far enough off of pure white that you can actually see mold lines and whatnot so when it comes time to cleaning that up you don't need to prime it which is nice uh, I know some some plastics when they come in all white it's almost impossible to see anything and that can be really frustrating uh, also about the plastic the the surface details are quite nice I mean they're finely molded pretty sharp and uh, there was little to no flash on the kit and I really did like that so that was a, a bonus now moving on with the remainder of the build uh, I unfortunately you're gonna have to have a fair amount of putty when you're working on this and uh, I didn't do a horribly good job of cleaning that up. There's still some very noticeable uh, seam lines here that I I just couldn't quite get filled in. Um, there's this very noticeable seam in kind of an awkward place where the two halves of the, the fuselage come together and that can be quite challenging to deal with. Additionally, you know, almost all of the uh, big pieces have very significant seams. There's a seam right along here that's actually fairly easy to deal with, but there's a big seam right across this big open round surface that is now, I mean, it's clearly visible here. There's a pretty visible seam here that I just, I didn't do a very good job of cleaning it up, but it's also, it's pretty 
uh, it's pretty overstated when you just put it together. So that was kind of a, a challenge and a little bit of a frustration for me. One thing I will say is that when you go to uh, place these reactors on, it's a little irritating. <laughs> it works and it's a clever design, but it can be a challenge to put into place because you kind of have to bring it in from the side, insert this piece forward, and then push this piece on to, to close it up. And it this section right here is molded on to this piece. So it's a really complex, there's a lot of complex shapes and, and significant uh, separation here when you go to seal that up. And it's really hard to clean that seam up without uh, messing with some of the surface detail there. So be aware when you go to put those into place, you're going to have uh, a little bit of a hard time there. Additionally, related to that, notice that the shields here they don't uh, come forward far enough to cover this seam where the reactor sets up front on the fuselage so you're going to want to uh, be aware of that and make sure that you get that filled in and, and looking fairly good before you uh, move on from that. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, this section right here. So this is the cockpit hatch and there's there's two cockpit hatches. There's this large cockpit hatch that we can see right there and then there's a smaller uh, cockpit hatch. Now it does come with a, a semi-detailed interior cockpit along with uh, a small instrument panel. Since I modeled this closed I didn't bother installing it and I'm gonna just hang on to those pieces, maybe use them in a kit bash later. I have a few gripes with this, and it's probably just me, but uh, first, this larger canopy, the post and hole system that goes around this border here, is doesn't quite work right. Uh, I ended up with a really noticeable lip right here at the front of this cockpit when I put that on, so that might be as much my fault as anything else, but yeah, that was a little frustrating. And the same thing here with the smaller hatch. I I couldn't get it to sit quite flush and ended up with kind of a unsatisfactory lip all the way around. So that's a little little frustrating. And one thing, one gripe I do have about this whole setup is that they give you that interior, but there's no good system for displaying this larger this larger cockpit here open and I think that's a missed opportunity I think the if they had give you given you the option to display this open then it might be worth going ahead and doing that detail work on the interior now you can display the smaller hatch open but again it, it doesn't work very well because there's there's nothing to stick it up on you just literally take it off and set it off to the side on top of the model which seems uh, kind of seems unfortunate and I think if they're not going to do that then they probably could have saved themselves some engineering struggles and just instead of making this piece these pieces separate just have them be a part of that top and then you don't have to bother gluing it on but uh, that's just me and my personal opinion on that I want to go back to the uh, the shields we mentioned them earlier when we were talking about mounting the reactors there were some ejection pin marks ejector pin marks uh, that were fairly noticeable and you'll want to clean those up they weren't hard to clean up I, I cleaned them out of there no problem and there were uh, I don't know exactly what it was but there's some lumps and bumps in there you can't really notice them so I just ignored them and carried on and the, the mounting is very straightforward, it just goes on real easy, so I didn't have any issues there. But just fair warning, you will have to clean that up. The last little thing, or well, <laughs> not quite the last little thing, 
I want to talk a little bit about this whole sub-assembly here, which is the the gun and dish assemble uh, dish assembly, the gun and dish assembly that I I want to discuss. So this is attached with a poly cap, and it is just a a push-in poly cap, as you can see. Now it's fine at the moment, but I have a feeling that uh, you're going to want to pick a pose and leave it there because over time I would imagine that that poly cap is going to loosen up if it gets too much activity and this this thing is going to lose the war with gravity and just end up falling off so you may want to not fiddle with that too much speaking of poly caps there's also a poly cap here in this hinge and uh, yeah that's not great. You may want to just fix that in place with some glue because I, uh, yeah, I, I tried several different things and I could not get that to tighten up so be aware of that. There is one, two other places where there are polycaps. There's polycaps here in the sensor array. I didn't have any issues with the polycap but uh, that is a tight fit when you go to put that on there and I scratched the heck out of the back of this sensor array when I was placing it in there so be aware of, of that when you go to assemble that on. The last place there are polycaps are here on the the engine bell and no problems there and I think those will be those will have good longevity without any issues. Now let's let's uh, let's take a look at the tail here. Now there are a lot of little pieces that go on the tail and give it a lot of really neat uh, surface detail and I like that. Uh, one one thing about it, attaching it attaching it to the fuselage is a little bit complicated because you have to attach it to either the upper or the lower section and then you put the, the two sections of the hull together and there is this little piece of detail that sticks out past where you're making the assembly and I think I didn't do any damage to it but I think if you're not careful you could easily snap that off so be aware of that. The other thing is you'll notice uh, almost certainly without any difficulty is that there is a fairly noticeable seam right there and unfortunately I don't know if there's actually supposed to be a seam there or not. I kind of attempted to fill it in and I kind of failed but uh, if there is supposed to be a seam there, then save yourself the trouble. If there's not supposed to be a seam there, then uh, have fun with that. Oh, and also on this tail section, you know, it comes in. It comes in two pieces. Uh, it comes in several pieces, but the the main fin here is two separate pieces, and they get glued up. And you will have a, a fairly noticeable glue seam right along this section here. Good news is that that sands off very easily and, and you have no problems cleaning that up. The next thing I want to talk about is paint decals and markings. So uh, painting, I just I did the painting at my airbrush station but uh, I did not use the decals for the skull or these number markings and uh, for a couple of different reasons. One was because they're good sized and I wanted to try stenciling them on. Two, because the instructions in their infinite wisdom never bother to tell you what color this orange is anywhere. Doesn't tell you what color goes on the front of the dish, doesn't tell you what any of those colors are, so you just have to kind of look at this on the stencil sheet and make your best guess and try and color match that. So if you're going to use those stencils, uh, those decals, I'm sorry, be prepared for uh, some color matching frustrations. Um, just for your information, I used the uh, third gen acrylic medium rust from AK Interactive to get that color and I, I think it's pretty close to what the, what you get with the decals. Same thing here, I used my, my Silhouette Cameo to, to cut out this decal here. And same thing with the markings. but um, And that seemed to work pretty well. It, uh, 
it stuck down reasonably well in a few places. It seemed to not quite stick down in a few places, and uh, there was one particular spot right there where it stuck down a little too well and ended up peeling some paint off, which was a little bit frustrating. Uh, I think the the complex shape here made sticking everything on there a little bit harder to pull off, but I'm not horribly disappointed with the end result there. I think that's that actually came out fairly good. Now, as for as for the uh, the rest of these little detail decals in general, I I liked them. They they went down real easy. I didn't have any problems with them. Um, they set very well. Uh, I of course used um, decal setting solution to get them on there, and I also used the softer solution to help them settle in. But uh, the only the only complaint or frustration I had with the decal these little marking decals were that the again the instructions weren't great uh, some of these decals are really tiny and I think the orientation is significant and it can be really hard to work that out looking at what is in the instructions so I feel like if there's a big failure with this kit in general, it's the it's the instructions not being clear on a on a few things. Okay, so the very very last thing I want to talk about is let's go ahead and put it back on a stand. Uh, Greeblies. This kit comes with lots of Greeblies. I put on a few small ones right here that you can you can see these little. Uh, lumps and bumps right up front here but there is dedicated greeblies on the sprue you got this little flat section here it's got a bunch of little stubs on it that you can cut off and there are little circle markings all around it where you can optionally glue all of those on if you don't want to scrape them off of here you could cut them off of there they're they're gated so you can just chop them off but you know the I like that they did that. I, I really do. I think that that's great that they gave you um, the required tools to kind of get that little detail on there. But I, I honestly think you'd probably, uh, I didn't bother putting them on, but uh, I think you'd probably get a better result just by getting a piece of uh, a styrene rod that was about the right size and cutting that into slices. I think that would probably be easier than, than dealing with either one of these options. So final thoughts for this. You know, for me this is one of those kits that it looked really cool and it kind of drew me in. And When I actually got into the build and finished the build, the end result was a little underwhelming. I'm quite certain that a portion of that is on me. But, uh, you know, I, I started out really enjoying it, but honestly, the, the fighting with the glue seams in those really big, open, unadorned spaces that pass right through the middle of some of the very limited details in there, that was a little bit frustrating for me. Uh, I know it's part of modeling, but still <laughs> kind of got me to run out of steam, basically, is what happened. And... That together with the fact that there's just no good option to display that canopy open also kind of frustrated me, tied together with the fact that the base is pretty bland, along with the fact that the instructions were less than helpful in several different places. I, I think this is a neat looking kit, but the ultimate uh, rating I would have to give the build if I was to give a rating uh, would be almost cool and it's it was kind of fun I you may have a different result um, if you want to see a really neat kit bash of this kit um, I'll put a link or a, a little thing here in this on the screen for scale a ton did a kit bash where they did a really neat uh, detailed interior and they've got some open access panels and other stuff and that is that is really cool I suggest you guys go and check that out well there you have it folks 
the Machinen Krieger Luna Driver Stingray from Hasegawa. Hope you guys found it informative and uh, I hope to see you back again soon. In the meantime, happy hobbying.